What? Oh! People have tried to make bubble rockets before, but no one's really taken the time to really harness the true power of the bubble. And these seem to be the three most common experiments that people are doing. You have cola and Mentos, you have uh, baking soda and vinegar, and you have elephant toothpaste experiment of hydroperoxide with potassium iodide. First up, vinegar and bicarbonate. Next up, cola and Mentos. Just gonna see what happens if I put a lot in here. So this has to do with the amount of cola. Look how much cola actually was removed from the bottle. But it also means I have to lift that much cola out. So I don't know if it's gonna work for our rocket. Just wanna see if I can combine more bubbles with this shape of the bottle. To make elephant toothpaste, you need three things. Hydrogen peroxide, a catalyst, and dish soap. The way it works is that hydrogen peroxide breaks down by itself into water and oxygen. Usually it breaks down slowly but we can make this happen even faster by using a catalyst. Catalysts can speed up the reactions, and in this case, we're using potassium iodide. So by adding potassium iodide, we'll make water and oxygen even faster. We then use dish soap to catch the oxygen into bubbles, and then you get a bubbly mess. All right, so we have a clear winner. Now we just have to convert this into a rocket. We're here at the Columbia Memorial Space Center to see if it's give this bubble rocket to take off. I really hope this works. Potassiumite drops to the bottom, hits the pins. The rocket should go up. It should. All right, just give it a shot. Right. Three, two, one, go. We added soap to hydrogen peroxide to create the bubbles. But the problem was, every time we dropped the balloon, it kept splashing the hydrogen peroxide, making more bubbles. As we kept going, we kept making a cushion of bubbles, which is preventing the balloon from popping. So we're going to give it a shot, but we're not going to add any soap. We're just going to see if we can get this thing to, to launch in the air. Rocket test. Three, two, one. It's an exothermic reaction. The bottle's actually warm. Launch pad. <laughs> All right, we know it's gonna work. Now let's go make it a rocket. Okay, so we're set up. Balloons in place, hydrogen peroxide is in place, soaps in place, and the decorations, the first official Sackboy bubble rocket in real life. Three, two, two one. one. Go. Rolling. Three, two. <laughs> we had like yeah, we had ignition before the countdown. We have a second one. Two. two. One. doesn't stand a chance. This is the switch of power right here, man. I switched this thing, that watermelon's gone. Whatever you do today, don't blink. Today's episode is about teleportation, or what I like to call high-speed travel. Now, if you don't want to trust your eyes, that's okay, because I have special guests, Kolinsky and Devin Key from YouTube coming on the show, and we're gonna use this vacuum pump, the air around us, and a little bit of air pressure to get a ball moving so fast you won't want to believe your eyes. Well, this is vacuum slash cannon. What? Which that's not, like we have vacuums at home, but ours do not actually blast <laughs> ping pong balls at a high velocity. I can't wait for this. If everything goes correctly, if uh, this ping pong <laughs> ball will vanish from one side and appear in another. Oh! 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 What? Uh, go ahead, we're gonna load oh, up the so cannon. Oh, so I know when to do it? Yeah. All okay, right. cool, so we're gonna place ping pong ball in here like that. Right, we're gonna push it down so that we can see it. Now, what I'm doing here, is we're gonna put a piece of mylar on the side. And now I've capped both sides of this PVC pipe yep. with mylar. Yep. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna screw this on so we get this nice and as close to airtight as possible. Exactly, there you go. yes. All right, so what's gonna happen is the faster you go, the more Mother Nature tries to prevent you from going that fast yep. by putting her hand on your forehead. <laughs> the air resistance, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna suck all the air out of this what you don't notice is that there's all this air above us pushing down on us right now. 
So when we pop that side, yep. all this air is gonna rush in through here and launch it out that side. Okay. Well, if everything goes as planned. <laughs> all right. So Sounds good. Let's uh, vacuum the air out. All right. So you can see the indention here. Why don't you check it out? There's an yep. indention. That's the suction Whoa. that's going on. Whoa. It's happening on both sides, all right? Yep. Let's turn off the vacuum. Disconnect it here. All right. So this is a vacuum chamber. All you have yep. to do is pop that. Is it going to be loud? Yeah. yeah. You just have to, your job is to watch the ball go from that end to that end. Okay. Ready? All right, you ready? Three. One, two, three. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, dude. Without knowing the drag, friction, or how effective our vacuum cam was, it's possible that the ping pong ball went supersonic. That was one of the coolest sounds ever, by the way. You should like, like sell it as like a sound effect. Like did, a, you, did you see it go? Yeah, yeah. I barely, I saw it like here, and I saw it as end over there. I figure why don't we weight the ball? Then it would go oh. a lot slower, but then it has more mass and it could maybe explode a watermelon. Maybe explode a watermelon. Yeah, right, let's, let's do, do it. it. I decided to add some air pressure behind it. Yes. So we've got a canister of CO2 that we're going to add 100 psi behind it, and then we're going to take the air out of here, and we're going to attack the watermelon. Love it. Right, watermelon doesn't go. stand a chance. <laughs> this is the switch of power right here, man. I switched this thing. That watermelon's gone. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh! Holy cow! Dude, nicely done. Oh my gosh. Literally blew the water. One for science. Holy cow. Look at that. Thank you. I, I knew that would work. What? <laughs> Today, we're gonna use an empty cardboard box so that we can discuss the invisible world, natural gas. That's right, we're talking about methane, and if everything goes correctly, we won't need one of these. Now, methane on its own is invisible, which is why we add mercaptan to it to make it more detectable so that we can smell it. But we do know if there was a leak, it'd be rising up to the ceiling because it's less dense than air, much like the bubbles were rising up to the ceiling. But when we lit the bubbles on fire, they burned red and yellow and orange versus our stove burned blue. So what's the difference? It has to do with the invisible mixture of methane and oxygen. Now, the problem with this is it's an invisible mixture. And if you didn't know what mixture you're dealing with, you have a very dangerous situation on your hands. So check this out. We filled the cardboard box with pure methane and we put a small hole in the top and made an opening on the side. When firefighter Mike holds a flame above the hole in the top, the escaping gas ignites, but the gas only ignites where the ratio of methane is within its flammability limit. Since natural gas is lighter than air, it continues to escape out the top of the box. And as it burns off, more and more air is entering the chamber below until it reaches that explosive limit within the chamber. Then kaboom. So if we had a pocket of 100% methane gas and it was lit on fire, it should burn red and yellow as it rises. Now, much like every experiment we've done today, do not try this at home. So Firefighter Mike, tell me what we're doing today. So right here, we have a balloon full of natural gas, which is a mixture of methane and mercaptan. The mercaptan is what gives its odorant. The biggest physical property you wanna show here is that it is less dense than the air around it. So it actually floats, which is an important safety feature of natural gas. It gets sits above you, it rises away. So if you were in this building, if we filled it full of, of propane, which is heavier than air, which is more dense than the, the air, it would sink and it could settle in places and it stays there longer. Oh, With this, if I walk outside or I open up a window, the gas itself is gonna dissipate. Just knowing that alone is uh, very helpful. They come in colors. <laughs> so when the balloon pops, the methane is no longer contained and spreads quickly across the ceiling. It also burns a bright red and yellow, which means the mixture of methane to oxygen was over 15%. Whoa! Let's see that again. Whoa! That is so hot. I need you to put your finger over a pumpkin right now. In this game, you can move your finger left or right, uh, when I say move three times, you could go one, two, three, or you could go one, two, three. Your choice is up to you. But you can't skip a pumpkin. And if you make it to the end, you can't loop around. You have to go back. Fair? Great. Put your finger over a pumpkin right now. Now, each of these pumpkins have an assigned number. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? Now, whatever number you have for your pumpkin, move your finger that many times now. 
Okay, great. Now, keep your finger on that pumpkin because I'm gonna assign different numbers. One, two, three, four, five, okay? Now, whatever number you have right now, I want you to move your finger that many times. Go. Okay, now we all had different choices. We could have gone left or right. We had different numbers. There's no way I could know what your pumpkin is right now. However, using impossible science, I can say with my mind control powers, you're not in this pumpkin. In fact, using mathematics, I can also say you're not in this pumpkin either. In fact, using my mind control helmet, I know you're in one of these pumpkins right here. Now I want you to move your finger one more time with one move to an adjacent pumpkin right now. Ready? Go. And in this envelope, I have a prediction slash detonator to the pumpkin you chose on your side of the screen. All right. Your pumpkin is this one. <laughs> I love my job.